Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. We have a very powerful broadcast this evening. As you've seen already by the title of the video, Obama and Erdogan exposed by ancient prophecy. Uh, exactly right there. Now keep in mind as we go into this particular prophetic segment of our news broadcast this evening, I have looked at how this prophecy, prophecy may very well have a dual uh, prophetic fulfillment or meaning, or it could be either one or the other. And so near the end of the broadcast, we'll be bringing, uh, I'll be bringing you back into that dual meaning of that. Uh, because when I say Obama and Erdogan, uh, we may also be looking at Pope Francis and Pope Benedict, both of these men, both pontiffs at this time, and yet they may be working hand in hand together, which we know they work together anyway. Nothing can be done whatsoever by o uh, President Obama or President Erdogan, except that it's already been approved by the Vatican because they do uh, rule the world, both temporal and spiritual powers, according to their own two keys on their flag. Let's get right into the prophecy here, friends, though. It is from, uh, and, and this is why we titled the, the video the way we have, it's an ancient prophecy. Uh, it is an apocrypha book called The Apocalypse of Thomas. It was discovered back in the early 1900s, uh, so therefore I cannot say for 100% certainty that this is... Uh, or, or should have been part of the canon or not. But clearly, uh, there are many things that are written there. Uh, and I do want to thank, uh, I know Sister Torres has sent this to me originally, but also Brother uh, uh, Adrian as well had sent uh, this to me when I asked about where was this prophecy about the king that rises from the south. It is in the, the, the Apocalypse of Thomas. Uh, but we're looking at another verse in here, and there's no numbers for the verses. It's only like a two-page document anyway, but it's very fascinating to read it. And this one here states, Thereafter shall arise two princes to oppress the nations under whose hands there shall be a very great famine in the right-hand part of the east, so that nation shall rise up against nation and be driven out from their own borders." You know, it even kind of brings in a new perspective on Yeshua's words when he says in uh, Matthew 24 uh, about how that there would be wars uh, and rumors of wars, uh, wars in different places and rumors of wars. As I mentioned the other night, that was actually World War I, World War II. And the rumor of the war is the Cold War era where there was always fear that there would be a third world war. Uh, now, there's no doubt coming a nuclear war in the very near future, but then he speaks about how that nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. But what's interesting is when we look at what this is saying here, nation shall rise up against nation, and the prophecy here, it is done through civil war strife. Oh, gosh, there's something I wish I'd have put in this, but it, we'll just have to skip it for now. Anyway, going back again. Therefore shall arise two princes to oppress the nations under whose hands there shall be a very great famine in the right-hand part of the east. That is the Middle East. Okay, so that nation shall rise up against nation and be driven out from their own borders there. Obama signs, just to kind of give you an idea of what we're speaking about here, looking back at some of the different news broadcasts in the past here, because both these men, Erdogan, President Erdogan of Turkey, and President Barack Obama of the United States, have been very much guilty of causing the civil strife with the nation uh, rising against nation. Keep in mind, though, Erdogan actually began this fight against terror, so to speak, under President Bush. But with President Bush, the, U the United States military was brought in to topple the nation. It wasn't nation rising against nation, causing strife within its own self, as we also saw in the prophecy of Micah chapter 7, verse 13, which we'll bring up momentarily. 
So I find this fascinating to say the very least here that in the case of Barack Obama and Erdogan here that uh, uh, I think his name is uh, Tiepi uh, Erdogan that we clearly see a civil strife involved in this unlike what you saw with Bush and Erdogan when uh, they did their uh, alliance together. In the article here, Obama signs bill to arm and train Syrian rebels by Stephanie Condon on CBS News, September 19th of 2014. She, one of her statements here, President Obama on Friday signed legislation that gives the U.S. approval to arm and train Syrian rebels in the fight against the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. Keep that in mind, also known as ISIS or ISIL. Well, we also know that he was doing this in order to topple Bashar al-Assad, which he's made no bones about. President Obama has not minced words about this at all. In fact, he armed ISIS very well. He left a lot of equipment behind uh, during the Iraqi war, did not bring it home. So they were very well equipped with U.S. tanks, Humvees. And even in the recent battle where Turkey and the United States special forces were working in Nineveh, uh, which is uh, right there, uh, Mosul in uh, northern Iraq, they got such a huge cache of equipment, ISIS did, it was unbelievable. Why would the Iraqi military just up and flee and leave all this equipment behind? Because Barack Obama needed to make sure ISIS had some more arms to be able to fight uh, Bashar al-Assad, especially seeing that uh, we were we were seeing that uh, with the with now with uh, Vladimir Putin stepping in, uh, that he was turning the tide for Bashar al-Assad. And by the way, in the Apocalypse of Thomas, I'm not as certain as of yet. One of those prophecies there may be very well referring to President Putin, and in a good light, not a bad light. I'll be praying about it just to see if the Lord will reveal more. Another article here uh, on CNN by Ed Payne. Uh, this was on January 16th of 2015. Pentagon U.S. to begin to train and equip moderate Syrian rebels. Title of the article there, CNN. The U.S. military will deploy 400 trainers and hundreds more troops in train and equip mission for Syrian rebel forces. The Pentagon said Friday the American troops will be deployed starting in early spring on six to eight week missions in three countries, Turkey, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, as part of the Obama administration's plan to explain, expand training for moderate Syrian rebels. Well, as you see, it's Syria and uh, the United States working together to train these rebels and ISIS forces as well. Those groups are battling forces loyal to the Syrian president Bashar al-Assad and extremist groups such as ISIS, as well as other linked to al-Qaeda. Not really ISIS. They're only there to make sure. This is why they're, uh, let me stop there. They're only there to make sure that ISIS was safe. And this is why we find, even when President Putin came in with his forces to help uh, Bashar al-Assad, the president of Syria, what do we find? The United States and NATO coalition forces had practically done nothing in the year-long campaign. Well, they were bombing Assad's forces, of course. That was the only thing they were doing. All right. As we say, we have had nothing but a war-torn region there in the Middle East, uh, thanks to the United States and Turkey and what they are doing. Uh, a lot of things have been blamed, too, on uh, Bashar al-Assad that we have found out later had nothing to do with anything. Now, let's take a look at Micah chapter 7, verse 12. We brought this up before, and the Lord kind of dealt with me on this today, a little bit different angle, and I really wanted to share this with you. It says, In that day also he shall come even to thee from Assyria. Now, I was originally looking at this as, as war on Israel. But if you back up and look at what it says here, let's see how it notes this here. In that day also he shall come even to thee from Assyria, and from the fortified cities, and from the fortress even to the river, and from sea to sea, and from mountain to mountain, notwithstanding the land shall be desolate because of them that dwell therein for the fruit of their doings. So, 
Is it kind of a reversal here? Was really what the prophet, prophet Micah was showing us is that because of the civil strife and civil war in, in, in Assyria, which by the way, Assyria covers northern Iraq, western Iraq, Syria, all these areas here, everywhere that the United States and Turkey are causing the civil war and strife, See, there was nations these princes are causing problems in, and they're causing nation to rise against nation, civil war, civil strife within, causing a humanitarian crisis that would cause the land to be desolate because of the fruit of their doings. In this case, it's the princess's doings. And, but in this, the, the, what the scripture is speaking of here, though, is the fact that the Civil war within the country there, their doings. In other words, the Syrian people, the Iraqis, the Kurds, they're fighting against each other because they're dumb enough to believe the United States that they should do this. Not only that, though, we have many fighters that come in that are not even Syrian to begin with, that are nothing but, as President Putin has said, they are paid mercenaries to fight. Very sad indeed uh, to, to watch these things that are happening. But notice where they come from there. They come over the mountains. Is that right? They come over the mountains, the Bible said. They, in, in order to come to you, they come over the mountains. They come over the sea, the refugees, everywhere. These Syrian refugees, and according to a latest article today uh, coming out about refugees, the Germany has now said that more than up to 10 million will come. And what has happened? They have left the cities in total ruin as desolate. Even as the Bible says that Damascus shall be a ruinous heap. Notwithstanding, the land shall be desolate because of them that dwell therein for the fruit of their doing, says Micah chapter 7, verse 13 there. War has caused nothing but a humanitarian crisis. You know, we got a, a letter from a sister, and I will not call her name there, but she, she does live in Europe. It was a precious letter that has really blessed my heart because we were speaking on one of our broadcasts about the humanitarian crisis in Europe, the Syrian refugee camps. We did our news broadcast recently and how it just moved our own hearts to see these people in the condition they're in. And we are planning a trip ourselves very soon to try to go out and reach out to some of these refugees, you know, to, to help them, give them something, clothes, anything that we can, because they're people. And the sister wrote me a very nice letter, and she said, you know, brother, we looked at it as just trouble and problem, you know, because we know that many of the men, there's the crimes that are being committed, the rape, everything else that is happening, and yes, that is a tragedy in itself as well, and it does come with this type of refugee crisis. Uh, because you have a bunch of men that come in as well, and then they end up forming gangs and et cetera. But the thing is, is what about those that, that, that are just trying to, to survive, that didn't want to come to Europe in the first place or the United States or whatever? They're in a humanitarian crisis. And as I said before, this is the one opportunity. Missionaries have died trying to get into these countries to take the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, the Catholic Church can easily go in there. You know why? Because the Catholic Church is no big deal. The Catholic Church formed Islam. But that's not Christianity. And now we have the greatest opportunity before us because they're out of their country. They're no longer under the Sharia law in their country. Yes, they, well, we know they want to start it here because that's the clerics that have come with them. But what about the hungry souls? Well, this sister wrote me and told me that they, it moved her heart. And, I, and if I remember right, sister, forgive me if I got it wrong, but she got with her church. Some of the people of her church, they went to, the, to, to some of the refugee camps near where they were at, and she said, we were amazed to see the hungry souls. And they, she said, brother, they wanted to know about Jesus Christ. And they wanted Bibles in their language. And I was, my heart was moved within me to hear this great testimony. God bless you, sister. I thank God for what you've done. And yes, we do have to be cautious in what we're doing because there are those that are not there for a good cause. There, ISIS said they would slip in their own people among the refugees, but that just tells us that there's true people there, and many of them may very well come to Christ, so who knows? Anyway, another article here that came out on December the 14th in 2015, uh, published by Time, 
It says exclusive, sarin, uh, exclusive article it was here, sarin materials brought via Turkey and mixed in Syria ISIS camps. Uh, Turkish MP to, the R, to RT wrote about this here. It says the main opposition Republican People's Party CHP member Erdem brought up the issue for public discussion in Parliament last week, citing evidence from an abruptly closed criminal case. He accused Ankara of failing to investigate Turkish supply routes used to provide terrorists with toxic sarin gas ingredients. There is data in this indictment. Chemical weapon materials are being brought to Turkey and being put together in Syria in camps in of ISIS which was known as Iraq Al-Qaeda during that time, Erdem told RT. Sarin gas is military-grade chemical that was used in a notorious attack on uh, Ghouta and several other neighboring uh, neighborhoods near Syria capital and Damascus in 2013. As you guys will remember, it was reported on the news. It was the main focus why the United States went in there to disarm all of Syria that they could of their, of their uh, chemical weapons. It says the attacks were pinned on the Syrian leadership, who in turn agreed to get rid of their chemical weapons stockpiles under a UN broker deal amid an, an imminent threat of U.S. intervention. And yet it was never Bashar al-Assad. I, I really have come to the conclusion in my own heart, Bashar al-Assad is probably not the evil villain that he's been made out to be. Western media, pumped up by the propaganda of the Obama administration, has made him to be what he is. The man been seen in the churches there in Damascus, even this past Christmas. He was there, him and his wife. He's, he's a medical doctor. He did not even want to take power of the country originally. I think the only reason he stays in power is fear of his own life if he leaves. Because they have blackmailed this man to no end. And thank God for President Putin for stepping up and coming to the man's aid. Now, my still, I still have a great concern for Israel, not because of Syria. I have no concern that Bashar al-Assad is going to attack Israel. But I do have a concern for Israel's safety because of the wars that are going on around there. And now I'm beginning to wonder if Israel's enemy is not really Barack Obama as well as Erdogan, the Turkish uh, president as well. These are where Israel needs to be aware of. Anyway, going on, to, as we get here, we're getting ready to close out. Turkey boosts arms supplies to Syrian terrorists in exchange for oil and antiques. Uh, this was uh, uh, brought out uh, in RT.com. It was published on November the 29th. We have certain information that Turkish government recently increased support for terrorists and, and the level of supplying them with arms, ammunition, munitions to continue their criminal acts in exchange for oil uh, antiquities stolen from Syria and Iraq at low prices, taking advantage of the presence of terrorists whom it enabled to control border areas. A statement from the Syrian General Command said, as cited by the official Syrian news agency, Sana. Friends, we actually have biblical prophecy that confirms that as well. And I did not, I wasn't paying attention when I put that part together. I wish I'd have brought the prophecy out. I think it's in Micah as well, chapter 5. But I have to go back and confirm that. Uh, another article here, Turkish uh, journalist Erdogan has been sleeping with ISIS from time immemorial. This was reported on VeteransToday.com. Uh, by Jonas E. Alex on November the 28th, 2015. From the start of the Syrian civil war, rebels fighting President Bashar al-Assad have had no better ally than Turkey's Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan. He has effectively kept Turkey's borders with Syria open, allowing fighters a haven in the south of his country as weapons and cash and other supplies have flowed to the battlefield. He has even fired on Mr. Assad's forces. Now, also keep in mind the United States declared a 60-mile buffer zone on the Turkish border with Syria across the whole northern part there would not tell Russia where they were bringing the U.S. special forces to where they would be operating at, but they created a buffer zone so that Russia would not attack, pretending to be Russia's ally all along. But what are they doing? working with ISIS. So yes, the two princes, according to this prophecy, are definitely working close together. Mr. Erdogan was one of the first world leaders to call for Mr. Assad to step down from the start, provide a lifeline to the rebels, 
But with radical Islamists controlling territory along the Turkish border in the United States, working with Assad's government to rid it of chemical weapons, his policy is in the turmoil in his country without a viable ally in Syria. Mr. Erdogan has himself been criticized for allowing weapons to get into the hands of jihadists. And now Russia has very much uh, accused him of that as well. After, uh, skip, let's go back to it again. Let's look at it one more time. There, uh, uh, thereafter shall arise two princes to oppress the nation, under whose hands there shall be a very great famine in the right-hand part of the East. That's the Middle East. Right hand? Well, you know where uh, this is the apocalypse of Thomas. He was in Israel, the right hand. So when he's standing there facing north and he puts his hand to the right, you have Syria, Iraq. So there's your prophecy right there. So that the nation shall rise up against nation and be driven out from their own borders. Oh my gosh. But as I said, could be a compound fulfillment. It could be that the two princes are really spoken of here of Pope Benedict and Pope Francis, who are both princes, even according to Rome. They are the successor of, as they call it, uh, Prince uh, uh, Peter there, or the Prince of Peace, Yeshua. They're the type of that, as they claim to be, which we know is a lie. Uh, but nonetheless, even if, even if the prophecy is, is speaking of them, the, it says under their hands. Well, who is the hand then of these two princes? If they were to be the actual prince, it would be Erdogan and Barack Obama. So nonetheless, and as you can see, they both got their little Pope fish hats on there so they can worship their fish god. That's something they love to do. And as we can see here, Pope Francis there, he's got his hand right there on Mr. Erdogan, telling him what to do with the military, letting him know. You know, right there in Vatican, he comes there, uh, President Erdogan, to meet the Pope. Make sure he gives his full allegiance to the sun god that he worships there. And of course, Barack Obama taking his instructions from the Pope as well, so that we know that everything is going according to plan. I'm Stephen Benoon. You've been watching Israeli News Live. Shalom and good evening.